Hello, Stuart, and welcome to the Pet Buzz. Hello, thank you for having me. You know, Stuart, we're so glad that you're here. Um, so, you know, uh, let's, so why is it so important to consider uh, pool safety when it comes to animals? Great question and a topic I'm not sure enough people with swimming pools actually think about because as you too well know, I mean, sometimes a pet is, uh, is as important a member of, of the household, frankly, sometimes more so. Uh, than some some of the humans that live in the house and you know the swimming pool can be a- absolutely as dangerous uh, for a pet uh, than, than even a child and so a lot of times people don't realize that and, and they take that for granted and that's how accidents happen you know I think some people have a tendency to believe that all dogs swim is that true so not only is that is that not true in in theory, uh, it's it's definitely not true in my own personal in my own personal practice. I have actually had to jump in the pool uh, for a neighbor's dog before at at the lake uh, and and pull the pull the dog out. It was a boxer uh, boxers. I, I learned from that incident that boxers are known uh, as as non swimming dogs and and as are several breeds. Um, and that dog sunk straight to the bottom as he apparently had done in the past. And interestingly, so we got the dog out and everything was fine, but interestingly, that neighbor at that point, uh, invested in a, a collar, a dog collar, an alarm system. So if the collar got wet, whether the dog fell in the pool or the lake, the alarm goes off and notifies the homeowner inside, which is, is, is a great way to protect your pet. What so okay, so let's talk about what we need to teach our pets in regards to the pool. I mean, usually it's about it's children, but since pets are the new fur kids, what do we need to teach them in regards (laughs) to pool the pool? Yeah, that's exactly right. And so there's a there's a couple things here. Yeah, one, um, you know, a a lot of people these days with their swimming pool, uh, they're installing safety covers or the trampoline style covers that you have seen, and I, I think people homeowners, pool owners have to realize, you know, that, that that applies to their pets as well and have to think about that when they're closing their pool at night or closing their pool for the winter, uh, because that's really when accidents can, can occur, when people don't, they're not thinking about their pool, they're not using them, they're not enjoying them on nights and weekends and holidays uh, during the off season. Um, but, you know, an, another thing I wanted to mention on that note is when people think about pools and pets, they don't realize that the opposite is true. So not only can a, can pools be dangerous for the pet if they don't know how to swim, but on the opposite hand, if if dogs can swim and pets can swim and they love to get in the pool, that can be a problem as well for the for the pool. Uh, I've read before in, in our world, a dog that like a Labrador, a dog that gets in the pool can be the equivalent of 20 or 30 humans getting in the pool because of how much dirt, debris, pet hair uh, can get into the filtration system and eat up the chemicals. So it's interesting. We've got to be careful for a dog who doesn't know how to swim. And then we have to be careful for for dogs that love to swim and get in the pool all day, every day. Maintaining your pool. It would probably require some different adjustments of maintaining if you have pets versus not having pets, correct? Without a doubt, Doc, uh, the most difficult pools that we have to maintain, bar none, uh, are the swimming pools that that dogs frequent? Um, they they eat up the chemicals. These pools require extra chemicals. They they clog up the filter systems. And but what's so funny is we will continuously tell the homeowner that. And as you too well know, uh, the homeowner doesn't care if they want their pet to be in the pool. The the pet's going to be in the pool. And and God bless them. That's you know that's that's what that pool's there for. But yeah, it can be a real problem. So Charlotte loves the the pool boy. So she needs to <laughs> she needs to remind the pool boy that that the dog goes in the water a lot. So that now, now you're making pays. it seem totally sexist. <laughs> I love everybody who works for us. So that, I'm nice to everyone who so, works for us. So is it? So she the she should re- remind the pool boy about the, the <laughs> special the consideration for maintaining the pool. And that's kind of a serious question. That's exactly right. But first, I'll address the nickname. My, my wife and kids uh, call me Pool Boy. So uh, <laughs> that's very endearing, near and dear to my heart. Uh, 
but but yes, we we have many instances where we do not know that the pets use the pool, and you know that's like one hand tied behind our back when we're trying to to do our job. So always, pool owners, uh, always tell your pool professional uh, about the pets that use the pool. We'll treat the pool differently because of that. Hey, another kind of a, a related question, though, and, and backed up too. I mean, you're you're not an expert in in the behavior of pets but maybe in the water, we take our kids to teach them how to swim. Can we teach our pets how to swim? We see it all the time. There's no question. Um, so as we all know, I mean, you know, doggy paddle uh, is a real thing. And we see that the, the best way for that dog to survive the, the, is the fall, uh, the initial fall, the dog learning how to go under and pop right back up and doggy paddle. But then it's teaching them uh, as you guys mentioned earlier, is teaching them their nearest exit point. So showing them where the steps are or where the benches are in the deep end. So it's very important. A lot of homeowners will try to keep their dogs out of the pool. I think it's very important to make sure uh, you do throw your dog in the pool, obviously, when you're there uh, and have some help so that you can see the dog uh, sink, bob down doggy paddle and, and exit the pool. And they'll never forget that the dog. The last thing that I'm really concerned about is the fact that pets are curious creatures. A lot of times we store our chemicals like in a cabana. Uh, but I think, don't you think Stuart, it's a great idea to lock up those pool chemicals? The easiest tried and true trick here is getting a, a Rubbermaid bin uh, that has a lid on it that, that seals shut. Uh, not, not only for your pets, but you just, you never know when a curious you know, three-year-old, five-year-old is, is walking around. So it's so easy to, to think that your chemicals are, are sealed, you know, in the bucket that you buy them in. Uh, but so often the lids don't get shut right. Water can get in, pets can get in, children can get in. So get your Rubbermaid bin uh, and stick it by your equipment and, and put the chemicals in there. That's great. This is really informative and really helpful for people, especially if they have pools or if they're near the water for their pets. Um, I'm just wondering if where's the entrepreneurs for making pet swimming school projects. <laughs> Thanks for viewing our content on Pet Buzz Plus.